Next question is from Pizza Kun. How does lack of sleep affect performance in the gym? Does it affect pumps? Negatively. Oh, man. I can't think <laughs> of anything that would negatively affect performance faster than lack of sleep. Oh, well, maybe yeah. just a chronic low calorie. No, no. Chronic low calorie long enough. N not faster. Like, imagine if you did, you ate no calories one day, how much that would affect your performance. Now imagine if I had no sleep one night. Like, the sleep really messes up uh, performance. It puts you in... The, the thing with lack of sleep is it is such a stress signal to the body because mm -hmm. for most of human history, the only time you would not sleep at all at night is if you were in danger or scared or you know in a really bad situation. And what your body does in that case is it ramps up stress hormones, ramps up catecholamine production, changes hormones, and really doesn't care about the long term because your body perceives the immediate threat to be something that needs to be handled right away. You can forget about your body adapting and building muscle and doing all that stuff in that particular space. Lack of sleep. They've done studies on lack of sleep and they can induce psychosis in people. I don't remember what the it's time like frame in a very short period of time. Something, yeah. It's like three days. Yeah. People like a majority of them yeah. start to go crazy. What about the pump though? Is there anything, is there, is there a direct mechanism that is affected by that? I don't think so. I don't know about the direct mechanism. Um, I mean, you know, if blood vessels are going to be more constricted, you're more stressed, you're probably going to get less blood flow. I, for me, it does. Yeah, cortisol, would, would that affect it in any way? I don't know if it would or not. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I th I think so. I think it's more. Uh, I mean, the fact that it, the fact that it affects the overall workout means it would affect the pump, yeah. you know, yeah. indirectly. But I don't think there's a direct. I feel it connection. more from the central nervous system. Like I just don't have access to that type of like force production. It's just like it it it, it is so much more fight uh, within what would normally be something I'd have access to if I'm lacking sleep. It just feels like my body like wants to just shut down, and so. I lack luster, uh, go through those types of exercises. Now, have you guys had though examples of like when you, you were really exhausted, you probably should have took the day off of working out. You, you ramped up on some, you know, pre-workout and you did it anyway. You're just full you had, of adrenaline. And then you had like the best workout of your yeah. life though. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it's because you're, you're, you're very got, occasionally. Yeah. You got happens. fight or flight kicking in. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, so that, I think that, that, that's why this, I think sometimes, it's tough for people to to like read or yeah. know what they should or should not do because most people that have been lifting for a long time can recall something like that too where they're like, I don't know what these guys are talking about because I hit a PR on a day where I only got two hours of sleep and I went and did this and this is how I felt and like so I don't believe that bullshit and that's I mean I know that I was in that camp in my twenties because I, I I knew that I could draw back to times where I had incredible workouts yeah. where I pushed through. You see athletes like on you know benders on cocaine for a few days <laughs> and then they like pitch a no hitter. Yeah, you know? <laughs> you're like what the hell? Yeah, yeah. I think How'd that was you a, do that. Who was that? Was a LSD too? Right? Was yeah, it, yeah LSD like, too. Yeah, you know um, this was the last piece of the puzzle that I put together. Uh, I, I, it took me a long time to figure out workouts. Nutrition probably was next. Sleep took me a long time because we're remarkably, humans in general, are remarkably good at coping with lack of sleep. Yeah. Like we could get by yeah. and we have caffeine and stimulants and, you know, we don't notice. We can, like I said, we can get by. And especially when you're young, man, my motto, literally, I used to say this, it's so stupid. I used to literally say this in my sales meetings. I'll sleep when I die. I used to tell people this all the time. I don't mm -hmm. need sleep. Sleep's for weak people. I was, you know, and I would sleep five hours a night. Uh, that was my average. And I would just go and go and go and, you know, and wonder why I got, you know, I would get ill and stuff like that. But uh, it took me a long time to piece that together. Now, once you piece it together, the contrast is dramatic. Mm -hmm. Like go for, you know, even just do like six and a half hours of sleep versus seven and a half hours. And do the comparison, and you'll see that it's a huge difference. Well, I think because the adrenaline, uh, the in the isolated situation, sometimes you might have this example of where it was great for you, but it, overall, I think the compounding effect of poor sleep and training, I think it starts to take a toll and add up. Yeah, you know where this really becomes obvious when you have your first baby. <laughs> oh man! Because your your sleep, you, you know, when you're in your twenties, you're sleep deprived for like a weekend. Yeah, but you, you know, know what though? To yeah, that exactly. point again, I was back. I was I was on a little bit of a high. For I remember a couple weeks after that. I remember, remember talking shit about it. Remember? You remember how easy it was? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like, I, I feel good. Some like, of my oh, best man. workouts have been these last <laughs> couple weeks like that. But guess what? It eventually catches up. Yeah, that's know? why. So it, that's 
that's what I mean by that. It's like you know, in an in an isolated yeah. event where it's just maybe one or even a handful or maybe like something like that. Up on adrenaline. Yeah, I mean, I just had a child. Probably one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Yeah, right. But two weeks later, and you know, it turns into two months, three months. That's right. You're like, oh, okay, this is a whole different ball yeah. game. But I think that that's the that's the part though. I think that throws people off when you when you yeah. talk about that, or even threw me off as a, as a young fitness trainer, like thinking that, oh, sleep's overrated. Because yeah. I used to say, that, sleep's overrated, you know, because I can I can power through, I can get through it, I'm fine. But not realizing, man, when you optimize your sleep, how much? And I think that's the better thing to focus on. Not, could I survive or get a good a, sing, a good single workout on a lack of sleep? It's what, what happens- What look like? What happens when I truly dedicate myself to, you know, a week or two weeks or three weeks of consistent- going to bed at like a really early time for myself or, or preparing myself for bed and getting good sleep and diet, then I think that's the better thing to teach people is like, instead of saying, oh, it, it doesn't affect me that much or, oh, I've had bad sleep and had my best workouts, forget looking at it like that. How about have you ever actually made an effort to m get great sleep consistently for a period of time to actually see how much it benefits That's you? That's a great point because the challenge with this is that I think people are in such a chronic state of poor sleep for so long they don't know what they don't know yeah. it's like that they've never experienced it yeah it's like that story you know like the, the, the man that was born with one eye sewn shut and everybody tells him you can you open your eye and he's like i, I see just fine and then finally when they open it he's like oh my god i can't believe what i was missing i have a buddy who all just was always chronically tired he would just you know he, he would always have to have caffeine he would nod off in meetings and just whatever he just thought this is just how it was well anyway when he got uh, he had this girlfriend that moved in with him and she was like, do you know that you like stop breathing when you're sleeping and you oh, choke right. and all that stuff? He had apnea, yeah. He had sleep apnea, did the sleep test, got put on the, uh, what is it called? The CPAP machine. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and he's like, I had no idea how big of a difference it would make. He's like, it's a game changer. But he didn't know because he had nothing to compare it to. So, you know, what Adam said, I think is uh, exactly right. Like make an effort to do this for a week so you have a contrast. Otherwise, it's like water. How many times do you get clients like, oh, you need to drink more water? Yeah, oh, I'm, fine. Water. I'm fine. And then when they finally do, they're like, I had no idea how much better I would feel from drinking more water. It's really no different than that. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.